Hey everybody, welcome back to my absolute beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. In this episode, we're going to go over the resource system and then we're going to move on to orbital maneuvers and the maneuver node system, which you can use to set up orbital maneuvers. So you can see on the pad here, we have the round probe piece, which is the State Putnik Mark II. And then attached to it, we also have the smallest one meter fuel tank, the smallest one meter engine and two of the retractable solar panel pieces. So if we look up in the right hand, upper right hand side of the screen, we have the resources button. If you just left click on it, it'll kind of pin it up there. And we can see all the resources that our current spacecraft has. We have electric charge, liquid fuel, and oxidizer. And the first thing you're gonna notice is obviously that electric charge is draining uh, at a pretty decent rate. It starts out at five, which is the amount of electrical charges that the probe carries with it initially and the probe is actually draining that power and it's gonna drain down to zero and then after that you can't control the spacecraft anymore unless you end up charging more of the electrical power. The way to charge more of the electrical power is that you can either have an alternator which is on an engine this current engine is too small to have an alternator but some of the bigger engines like the mainsail engine uh, have an alternator on them and they'll generate about 0.03 uh, units of charge per second which is the rate that you see here that this is actually going down so those will cancel out uh, the second way that you can generate electrical power is through uh, the nuclear reactor piece that just pretty much constantly generates it and you can also generate it through the solar panels like the ones that I have on here so if we right click on the solar panel you can see that we have zero sun exposure zero energy flow that's because we don't have the solar panel extended so we're gonna left click to extend it and it's gonna just do the little animation to extend it out and then if we look up here, we'll see that this rate is now negative and the electrical charge is charging back up. So now that's just gonna stay charged because it's it's charging at a quicker weight, quicker rate <laughs> than the probe is actually using up the electrical charge. Uh, the other thing uh, that is gonna go down as it's used in the spacecraft, obviously, is the liquid fuel and the oxidizer. And you can see those are in different uh, uh, that's in a, a, an uneven ratio of amounts there but they're going to be used at a rate so that those go down at the same uh, time so if we uh, throttle up the engine here and we hit space to launch see that those are both going down at the same time and those are obviously just going to keep going down and going down until it's not it doesn't have any more fuel and then this is going to flame out but I'm not going to make you watch that to an example of how uh, liquid fuel can be used but no oxidizer can be used from the same fuel tank. So now we've got a slightly different uh, craft on the launch pad here. This is just one of the uh, bracket systems that can be used to, uh, it's called the launch stability enhancer. It's just a clamp that can be used uh, to keep your, to keep any, any piece in place until you actually use that part of the stage. It helps to stabilize stuff on the launch pad. I'm just using it as kind of a test stand here. But you can see that we've replaced the rocket engine with a turbojet engine, and we've also mounted a radial air intake on the side. So we can see that uh, we've got some airflow. That's this. I think this is just the basic amount of airflow that goes by it. This is going to show you how much drag is uh, going it, th that it's introducing to the craft. And then we also have. Uh, a new resource up in the resource box which is intake air that's going to show you how much intake air is flowing past that intake so if we th if we throttle this up and long and hit the uh, the spacecraft button to st or the, the spacecraft button the staging button which is spacebar to <laughs> uh, start the engine you can see that this is using liquid fuel, but it's not using any oxidizer. We can also see that it's flipping out right now because it is, you can see that what's flashing on here is intake air deprived. It doesn't have enough intake air coming into the intake to actually keep the engine going consistently, and it's just, you know, flaming out. So if we hit spacebar, this is going to release this clamp, and we can see 
it's gonna not flame out as much, except when air stops flowing, and we're gonna crash. <laughs> but as long as you keep the, uh, the craft moving quickly enough to keep air going through that air there, that air intake, then it's not gonna flame out. Uh, the the only time that you really have to worry about flaming out is when you're doing a turn away from the direction of the airflow. And that introduces a whole bunch of problems because you're going to start spinning out and one engine will be flamed out and the other one won't be flamed out and it's just a crazy mess. But uh, I'm going to cut to orbit right now and we'll start going over the orbital systems. Okay, so we're up here in a low carbon orbit. If we hit the map view, we'll see that it's about a 100 kilometer orbit. Uh, this is pretty much where we left off in the part 2 video, except that you'll notice that on this spacecraft we have a little fuel tank here. This is actually an RCS fuel tank, and the spacecraft is also surrounded by these RCS thruster blocks, which are a way to use the RCS fuel. To give you a little bit of background, there's, there's three ways to control your spacecraft when you're in space. Uh, the first way, the most basic way, is torque and this is built into all of the command pods uh, the manned command pods have more torquing power than the unmanned probes do and but you can actually add torque power with the normal SAS part which is, makes it pretty different from the ASAS part which is more or less an autopilot the SAS part uh, really just adds torquing power to your spacecraft uh, the other way to control your spacecraft is RCS, and RCS is more or less just gas that comes out of these little thruster blocks. So that's what the RCS monopropellant fuel is. And uh, RCS stands for Reaction Control System. So if we hit R to enable RCS, and then we use the rotation keys, WSAD, you can see that it's firing these little jets of air and they just come out of the spacecraft and they rotate you around and it, it works a lot faster than say we hit R and then we do the same thing. This is how slow it goes when we don't use the RCS. Um, the only disadvantage to RCS though is that it adds another resource that you have to keep track of. So you can see that we've used about uh, 20 units of monopropellant fuel just doing that little bit of maneuvering that we did. So that, that's something that you really do have to keep track of if you're using RCS. And then obviously it also adds weight to your spacecraft. It adds a little bit more weight than, say, adding on a couple of uh, SAS units. The third way to control your spacecraft is thrust vectoring or engine gimbling. You can see uh, that this engine does have uh, gimbling. You have the option to lock the gimbal or free the gimbal. Really, that's more used for letting the... ASAS keep your spacecraft on a single heading because if you're setting up a burn uh, You're gonna want to do that before you're actually doing the burn and engine gimbling only really works when your Engine is turned on or else it really isn't doing anything except moving the engine around And you really want to you want to you know set up your heading for a burn Get ASAS on and then do your burn. You don't want to wait until you're actually already doing the burner. It's going to be super inaccurate. You're going to waste fuel. So if we get into the basics of orbiting, if we go back to the map view, you'll see that there's two little indicators on our orbit. This one is our periapsis. This one is our apoapsis. See, our periapsis is lower than our apoapsis. That's because periapsis is the lowest part of your orbit. Apoapsis is the highest part of your orbit. Uh, Going with that, periapsis is also the fastest part of your orbit, and apoapsis is the slowest part of your orbit. That's because uh, your, your total energy, the total energy of your spacecraft, in lieu of having any external forces like aerodynamic drag or your engine uh, firing, uh, the total amount of energy your spacecraft has is going to stay constant. So as you gain altitude, you're going to be gaining uh, gravitational potential energy at the expense of kinetic energy. So when you go up to apoapsis, your altitude is going to increase, but your speed is going to go down. When you, when you fall back down to periapsis, your speed is going to increase, but your gravitational potential energy is going to decrease. The only way to change that, really, is either to uh, be caught in the atmosphere of a planet, which is 
more or less arrow breaking that's just going to slow you down or you can do a burn with your engine and use up that fuel that's called delta v that's going to give you a change in velocity at any given point in your orbit so the more fuel bring up the, the more fuel that you bring up the more delta v that you're going to have to work with to change the characteristics of your orbit and there's more or less three ways that you can change the characteristics of your orbit. You can do a prograde burn, a, a prograde or a retrograde burn, which is the same direction that you're facing or the opposite, or the same direction that you're traveling or the opposite direction that you're traveling. And that's what we've already gone over. These are these, those are these indicators on the nav ball here. This is prograde and then the, on the opposite side is retrograde. Uh, the other ways that you can burn are radially, which is in towards the center of your orbit or out towards the outside of your orbit, or normal antinorm, which is um, directly up or directly down. Uh, and the best way to illustrate this is actually to bring up the maneuver node system. So we're gonna, if you click anywhere on your orbit, you're going to see this little ball. So if you left click, it's going to say add maneuver. You add maneuver and it pops up this little indicator. We already know these symbols. This is retrograde and prograde. That's the opposite direction you're traveling and the direction that you're traveling. This is radial. This is facing directly out from your orbit and then directly in towards the center of your orbit. And then this is normal and anti-normal, which is directly up at a 90 degree angle and directly down at a 90 degree angle. If we use the left mouse button to kind of tug on these, it'll the, the dotted line will show you what's going to happen if you do a burn in that direction. So if we pull on the prograde, it's going to expand out and we can see that the periapsis basically drops down to the exact point where we're doing that burn and then the apoapsis extends out on the opposite side. That's a, a basic characteristic of doing burns, which is that what you do on one side of a burn directly affects what's happening on the other side of the burn. So, or on the other side of the orbit rather so if you're going to do a burn at your periapsis that's going to increase or decrease your, your apoapsis if you do a burn at your apoapsis that's going to increase or decrease your periapsis so if we do a retrograde burn and kind of bring that back down to where it is right now if we do you can see if we do a radial burn inside that's kind of going to translate the orbit over so it's going to move this orbit from here pretty much, if we orient it this way, it's going to pretty much just move it over to the left. So the periapsis is going to decrease and the apoapsis is going to increase. It's going to do the opposite of that, obviously, if you, whoops, I just got rid of my maneuver node there. It's going to do the opposite of that if you do it the opposite way, the peri, or the, the, uh, whoops, let me just adjust this a little bit. You can see that the periapsis is going to drop and the apoapsis is going to increase in the other direction. And that's useful if you're trying to match up an orbit or if you're trying to increase your periapsis and decrease, or increase your apoapsis and decrease your periapsis at the same time. So then the final way that you can burn is normal and anti-normal. That's going to basically just tilt your orbit over. The, you can see right now we're in basically an equatorial orbit. We're going directly around the equator of the planet Kerbin. But then if we do a normal burn at this point, it's just going to tilt it and rotate it around that point. The, the angle between uh, basically this zero degree orbit and whatever your orbit is, is called your inclination. And if you're, say, doing a rendezvous or if you're going to be doing a transfer between your orbit and another, and another orbit that is tilted, then you're going to want to do a, a normal or an anti-normal burn to change your inclination to the inclination that matches up with whatever orbit you're trying to go to or else you're not actually going to meet whatever you're trying to rendezvous with. So if you want to get rid of a new maneuver node, say you've already used it or you decided that you don't want to use um, or you don't want to use it at all, then you can just left click on it and then hit the little X and that'll get rid of it. Um, what I'm going to do here though is we're going to set up a maneuver node way over here on the apoapsis. Left click, left click, and then we're going to do a prograde burn. See that's going to go out and increase our 
That is actually going to flip our orbit around a little bit, but it's going to inc it's going to turn our apoapsis into our periapsis, and it's going to increase our apoapsis. So we're just going to keep burning out and burning out by tugging on that, and then we're going to left click and kind of finalize that um, that maneuver node. Now, if we hit M and we rotate our nav ball around, we're going to see a blue icon on the nav ball. That's going to be the heading that you want to keep when you're doing when you're making your maneuver node burn that you just set up. So if you rotate around to that and you hit T, that will pretty much keep make sure that you keep on that heading for when you actually do your the burn that you set up. So if we hit T here, that's going to keep us on a heading that matches up with where we're going to want to be when we burn. And you can see that it's added all this information now on our uh, side of our nav ball that tells us um, you know how the burn is going to go basically. So it says that the maneuver node is in about 11 minutes and 30 seconds. That the estimated burn time is 9 seconds. That means that when the engine that we have with the mass that we have um, is at full throttle, it's going to be about a 9 second burn. So it's going to be a little bit longer than that because you got to take the time to throttle up, but it's going to be about a 9 second burn. And then this tells you the delta V that you need to actually achieve this orbit that you set up. So it tells us that we have a delta V of about 550 meters per second. So if we go switch back to the map view and time accelerate around our orbit, we're going to wait until we're just about ready and you can see that we can't warp any faster, but we're going to wait until we're just about ready to hit that maneuver node, which is right about there. And you can see that the S, or the ASAS has kept us on just about the same heading that we need to be at to do that maneuver node. Considering that burn is about nine seconds, what I like to do is kind of straddle the the, the node on either side. So we're gonna want to start our burn at about four seconds, and then it'll end at about four seconds after the node. So we're gonna start burning right about now. You can see that that's going down. We're going to want to stop our burn by hitting X right about when it goes down to zero. And you can see that the, the blue indicator kind of crept off. That'll update pretty much instantaneously to show you what uh, correction you need to make to your burn to achieve exactly what, you, what you've planned. But now you can see that our burn is pretty much exactly what we planned out. Our, uh, we, the, our, our orbit has a high eccentricity now. I don't have a mech jet uh, to tell uh, what the orbital characteristics are. Um, if you have the mech jet mod and you install that, it will actually tell you all the detailed characteristics of your eccentricity. But basically, the, the smaller your eccentricity is, the more circular your orbit is, and the larger it is, the more uh, elliptical your orbit is. So you can see that now our periapsis is still about 100,000 meters because that was what our circular orbit was, but now our apoapsis is about 1.8 million meters. But you can see it's it's still not quite far enough to go out to the the moon. But um, if we, I'm just going to show you what happens. If we keep burning, we're just going to basically keep extending that apoapsis out until we achieve escape velocity, which is right there. So now you can see that we're in an escape trajectory from the planet Kerbin. We'll, we'll escape its sphere of influence, which is the point at which we stop being controlled by its gravity. That's in about one day, 17 hours and six minutes. And that's, that's going to be a uh, hyperbolic or a parabolic orbit as opposed to an elliptical or a circular orbit. And if we just time accelerated, eventually we're going to be on this, uh, this little orange or, or yellow orbit that's that's now uh, centered on the sun rather than the planet curve and sun periaps is, is going to be uh, about 11 billion miles or 11 billion meters rather so now basically we have all the tools that we need to be able to uh, do pretty much anything that we want to do in Kerbal Space Program so in the next video I'm going to show you um, some of the basics of doing transfers between two different planets and uh, using the maneuver node system and all the parts and everything to set that up. Thanks for watching. Bye.